Deputy White House Press Secretary Hogan Gidley. Hogan, always great to see you as well. I want to start with Kevin Cork's reporting on this citizenship question. Why the push? Why the flip on this? Why are you going for a second bite at the apple? Well, I think the president understands what most Americans want. Uh, they have a right to know who's in this country. Uh, I, it's kind of fascinating to me. We're at a weird place in America when President Donald Trump is being asked why he wants this question included in the census, and Democrats aren't being asked why they don't. Everyone should want to know who's in this country, and this is nothing new. A version of this question has been on the census since the 1800s. The Supreme Court, as Ken Cuccinelli just pointed out, said this question is completely lawful. We just didn't like the way it was argued. So the president's going back and taking a look and saying, I'm going to use everything in my legal authority to make sure this question is added to the census because the American people have a right to know just who's in this country. So, Hogan, is there any reason to believe that if people are here illegally and they already have some distrust, we spent a lot of time on the couch talking about this last hour, and the point was made, why do you think they would even answer the question anyway? Is there going to be additional language that says, parenthetically maybe, you will not be moved upon or targeted if you answer this in an, in an honest way that you're here illegally? Right. Well, I'm not going to get ahead of what the question may or may not say. We're still fighting to get it on the census itself. But the fact is, he wants to know who's in this country, and this is a good way to do that. Uh, there are all types of questions, as you know, if you've ever filled out a census form on there, whether you have running water, how many people are in your, sure. uh, in your, in your domicile, all those types of things. So this is just a logical question to ask. And you think uh, people will answer it? Well, I hope so. I mean, look, they've already broken the law so many by coming into this country illegally and unlawfully. But uh, the fact remains, we still want to know who's in this country as a citizen and, and who is in this country uh, who isn't a citizen. Uh, and I wrote down what you said. And the next time I talk with a Democrat on this, I'm going to say, Good. why don't you want the question? Uh, let's move on and talk about Iran. Uh, the president warned Iran yesterday that it had, quote, better be careful. And the U.N. is confirming today that Iran has broken the limit that the 2015 nuclear deal put in place through that nuclear uh, deal enrichment, particularly. What is a red line for us? Look, the president doesn't like talking about red lines, uh, but he did make the point yesterday, and I was standing just right beside him when he did. He said Iran better be careful. He doesn't want to go to a war with Iran, but the fact is uh, their behavior has to change. I mean, they're the world's largest sponsor of state terrorism, a state sponsor of terrorism, I should say. Uh, we have sanctioned their, their oil. We've sanctioned their metals. We've sanctioned people who do business with them. Their economy is teetering on the verge of collapse. We've got to bring them to the table to have a conversation about getting rid of their nuclear program. It also mm -hmm. exposes one important thing, and that is that the Iran nuclear deal was a joke. The president saw that. He campaigned on getting out of that deal uh, when he was running for president, and he did exactly what he said he would do. And now we know that the whole deal was predicated on a lie. Iran sold a lie to the, to the, to the world writ large, and, and many people bought into it, but our president didn't, you know so what he pulled else out of the deal. We know how big our signature was compared to everybody else's. No, because we're, we're not seeing Iran sweat other countries uh, as they pull out business, so on and so forth, the way that they are really upset with us. And albeit we pulled out of the entire deal, but that signature meant a lot. Red line, you say the president but, doesn't use them. But, but, but we there did are other see... people who've stepped up here, Harris, as you, as you saw the British, mm -hmm. uh, British government Absolutely. take over that tanker as well. I mean, that's very important. One of our largest partners and allies doing it. Uh, real quickly, red line with Syria, Kim weapons on their own people. So the president... Uh, didn't he use a red line in that, and is that in our future? You don't have to say what it would be necessarily. I see you're careful about that. Very careful, because, again, the president doesn't want a war with Iran, but he is going to do everything to make sure Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. He's going to protect United States citizens overseas, and he's going to do everything to protect our partners and allies, and I just got to leave it at that. So two weeks ago, the president gave Congress a deadline to introduce legislation to revamp asylum laws. I want to get back to the border crisis right now. That actually has not happened. And now a top White House official has said ICE and DHS are ready to go ahead with plans to deport one million, up to one million illegal immigrants. What's the White House uh, action on that today? 
Well, look, this is a very sad situation. We have a crisis at our southern border that's both humanitarian and uh, national security in nature. Uh, we have uh, over a million people in this country who have received final deportation orders from a judge, meaning they've already had their day in court and they're supposed to go home. That's a set of rules and laws uh, that should apply to everyone in this country, but American citizens get put in jail if they ignore a court order. But if you're here illegally, I guess the law doesn't apply to you. And Democrats are there saying, we want to make illegal immigrants' illegal behavior legal. Now, that makes no sense whatsoever. We've got to change the asylum laws. And the credible fear claim that illegal aliens use when they come into this country has gone up 1,700 percent. And that's when they come here and claim that they are fleeing their government oppression right. to get into our country. We've got to change those laws, make it stricter, because so often, uh, you know, upwards of 90 percent of those cases are thrown out because they are fraudulent cases. And that actually stops people who deserve uh, protection from the uh, from the American government, some from other countries. It's a backlog that has to be cleared out so the people who actually deserve asylum uh, can get it here uh, in the United uh, Hogan, States. Hogan, I, I want to ask my team to put up some numbers that we researched today uh, because there's a lot of backlash against President Trump and this administration, as you know, in terms of deportations. Uh, President Obama Roughly three million deportations took place when he was in office, more than under any other president. You can look at the figures for yourself. Uh, right. When you break these down, some of them uh, occurred in the years, the later years of the Obama administration. We were already seeing this sort of thing and the necessity for it. Last quick word. Well, there are two differences uh, with the Bush-Obama years versus ours. First of all, they were mostly Mexican males, adult males coming into this country, and we have the laws in the books to send them right back to Mexico immediately. What we're seeing under this president are females and children being trafficked by drug smugglers and, and, and child smugglers and human traffickers coming into this country. That makes it more difficult for us to send them back because they're coming from uh, uh, El Salvador and Honduras and Guatemala. Our mm. laws aren't set up to handle that. That's why we've got to come to the table, or Democrats should at least, and talk to the White House to figure out how we solve this problem and close these loopholes. Because right now, children are being exploited, women are being exploited, and Democrats are nowhere to be found. They'd rather use it as a political issue, and it's sad because well, we could, as the president says, fix this in 15 minutes if they just come to the uh, table. Hogan Gidley, the whole country is waiting for something to happen on Capitol Hill on this issue. Great to have your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much.